Spurge here, and in this video, we're gonna break down the all new HJC ARFA 71. So there's times where we say something is all new and it's like kind of new. It's not quite all new. With the ARFA 71, which is replacing the outgoing 70 ST, this really is a ground up redesign. From the shell to the internal fit to some of the features that we're gonna talk about throughout this video, it is a different helmet. And to that end, I actually have Pat McHugh's personal 70 ST here for the video. Uh, Pat McHugh is our, pretty much our main product tester and the 70 ST is one of his favorite helmets that he uses for commuting. And we're gonna compare these two helmets throughout the video so you can kind of see some of the key changes between the two models, the outgoing 70 ST as well as the new 71. We'll bring this back up again later, but I just wanna foreshadow a little bit as to what you will see as we work our way through this helmet review. So first and foremost, the price on this has increased. Price is gonna start around the $480 mark and go up for there depending on graphics. It's about an $80 increase in price over the previous version. Now, this helmet will still ship for free and we do have our price match guarantee. Sizing has not changed extra small up to a 2XL. The one thing to note here is that it was previously just three shell sizes. You now have four shell sizes, so medium and large get their own dedicated shell. The shell construction itself is a new PIM EVO construction that stands for Premium Integrated Matrix. It used to be PIM Plus, but really what they did was they changed the carbon fiber and the aramid and the fiberglass mix to make the shell a bit stronger and to just kind of add in a bit more protection to the shell design. Now with that, weight has increased. So it is now three pounds, 10 ounces in a large, which is a four ounce increase in weight over the previous version. You'll also notice as you're looking at the front of this, it is a much beefier, burlier design down around the chin bar. And some of that additional weight is gonna come from the fact you're now gonna have the ability to have built-in Bluetooth communication systems right into the helmet. We'll get more into that in just a minute. So from a fitment standpoint, just note that this is a DOT only helmet. The previous version was DOT and ECE. HJC is not having the helmets coming into America tested uh, for ECE, so it's not gonna have that ECE sticker on the back. And the fitment, while it is still intermediate oval around the crown of the head, and that means a little bit longer front to back, a little bit narrow on the side, we find that intermediate oval is the number one shape that works well for the majority of riders in the American market. Around the side on the bottom, it definitely has more room. So it feels like intermediate oval on the top of the head around the crown, but as you work your way down to the side, it has more of a round feel in where your cheeks sit. So just something to note, if you have trouble you know, wearing helmets where you don't have enough room for your, I don't know, your chip monkey or cheek folks out there, this is something that does have more room around the side of the head once you get down from the crown. So. Working our way through all the facts on this. If you're keeping score, and again, I'm just gonna pull this one up here so it's sitting next to it. You can completely tell that the helmet shell itself is bigger. Um, one of the things that we really liked about the outgoing 70 is that it was sleek, it was very sporty in its design, really drew a lot of its heritage from that ARFA uh, series race helmet within HJC's lineup. This is definitely departing from that. Now, some of the things we did like was they redesigned the face shield on this, so it gets rid of some of the distortion that was on the previous version. There's a different closure mechanism, so it locks down into place, and you just kind of run your finger along this, and then it pops up. So the one thing to note is you just kind of have to like push in on that little button as you're sliding up underneath here, and it slides right up. Now, the mechanism itself, you'll notice, is completely different than the old version, and the one thing to note is that it locks up into place really nicely at the top. It then kind of has a weird detents in this middle position where you're probably not gonna use it, and then it closes. So if you're somebody that likes to detents in, in different positions, there's not a lot of detents holding it there, and that's because this new design to the mounting point is this odd triangle shape that doesn't really hold its detents very well. Now, to get it on and off, you kind of just pull that forward and it pops right off, and then to push it back into place, it slides right in. You just have to push in as you're rotating down. So really an easy system to use, but it doesn't have the same level of detents that we've seen from previous ones. So you're really gonna go full open or you know, you can kind of use it in that position, but it, it's not really gonna sit in a position that would not 
impede your view in some way. So really kind of closure there. Now, as long as we're talking about the face shield, the one thing to note is that the drop down sun visor on this one did get extended by about 10 millimeters. And what's really cool is they've repositioned where this is sitting now. So this is actually underneath the little pod here where you could add a Bluetooth system. You can see on the previous version, it was a little bit more prevalent up onto the actual side of the helmet. So this is a little bit more hidden. And what's neat here is if you pop this pod off, so you have a little, little button here, you just kind of push that button down and then this pod just slides right off. This is actually a really cool feature. So you have this little level right here. So there's three different positions. So if you slide the face shield up and then move it down, it changes exactly where the drop down sun visor comes down. So if you're somebody that always has a problem with the drop down sun visor poking you in the nose or it doesn't come down far enough, um, there's three different levels that you can switch to when you're using the drop down sun visor. So this is the first time that I've ever seen somebody really incorporate this in and it's a nice little comfort feature to have. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave the side pod off. We'll talk about that in a minute. When we're looking at the vents on this, now ignore the bright orange piece of tape that old Mr. McHugh has on the front of this. Um, he drives apparently dead on into the sun and this is his little version of adding sun protection into his personal helmet. But I want to show you this side by side because the previous version does have this big air scoop on the top. However, the new version actually increases that. It's wider and it's taller. Now, using this on the road, tremendous amount of airflow. You can actually feel the air pushing into the top of your noodle, much more so than the previous version. However, this also lifts up and acts as more of a scoop. So you get a little bit more road noise than the previous version. In the way this was designed, this catches more air <clears throat> and you can actually hear it a little bit more than you can with the previous version. So it's a, it's a, a win in the fact that it does increase venting. It's a bit of a, a loss in the fact that it does increase road noise with that as well. Now, if we're just taking a look at the back, you're gonna notice that the vents in the back are now passive vents. So the previous ones, you could activate, open or close for exhaust vents. These are a little bit of a sleeker design to it and they are just passive. So they're always gonna be open from, a, from an exhaust vent standpoint. So again, just when you're looking at these side by side, the first thing you'll note is the increased bulk to the helmet itself. The previous version was a bit more of a sportier look to it, and the new version is definitely focused more on the touring aspect. So it loses a little bit of that DNA that we've seen from the top race helmets from HJC. Now, <clears throat> as we're looking at the pods on these sides, this one has a pod as well, and we're just gonna pull this off. You can see nothing really kind of hiding under there. What these are for is these are for adding in the comm systems from HJC. So if you wanna add in Bluetooth, these, this new 71 is gonna have an integrated system. You can either opt for the 50B or the 21B. Really what you need to know is that these compatible systems are made by Cena. So if you're considering the 50B, that is gonna have the same technology and features as the Cena 50S. Uh, or 50R, and then if you're looking at the 21B system, that is gonna have the same capabilities and quality and features as the 10S from Cena's line. So you can check out those product reviews separately to get an idea of what kind of features you're gonna have here. Now, personally, I would prefer not to have an integrated system. This is something we're seeing from a lot of manufacturers. They're going to integrated Bluetooth systems. Now, some of this is from mandates that are coming out of Europe to uh, streamline helmet design and to make sure that we're adhering to safety. There's you know, been studies done where having a Bluetooth system mounted to the outside of a helmet can cause damage or further injury if installed incorrectly. But personally, I like the freedom of being able to install whichever Bluetooth communicator to the helmet that I prefer. Um, however, there are people out there that really like the integrated design. They claim that it cuts down on wind noise and it helps with the overall you know, design of the helmet when the, when the Bluetooth unit is designed to be inside. So like it or not, uh, is, is not really the debate here. It is more about the fact that this is getting it. So if you wanna add a Bluetooth system to this, I'm sure there's a way you could clamp on a Cardo on here, but more than likely, you're gonna be opting for one of the integrated designs that is made by Cena for HJC. Now, <clears throat> you'll see here, 
that you got your battery pack located here. If you want to add the comm system, the battery pack integrates into the back of the helmet. So once it's in there, you really are just charging the helmet. You're not having to pull the unit off or, or back and forth. You can just kind of charge the helmet up. So internals are removable. You do have the removable chin skirt at the front of this. And then I'm going to pull this out so you can kind of see it. But really just the same contoured interior that you would be familiar with with the other outgoing version of this. Emergency cheek pads are removable. Quick snap in, snap out. And it has got a nice comfort liner that's contoured to your face. So really no surprises when we're looking at the interior of the helmet. Both sides are gonna be identical. And then just pulling out the liner on this, you're gonna see that it doesn't utilize snaps at the front, it actually mounts up into the brow. So you don't have to worry about any awkward points pushing into your forehead. One of the things that I will say is that not all brow mounts are equal. Some of these uh, tend to stay in, some of these tend to come out depending on manufacturer. I like the fact that this is a pretty sleek design. Once you have it in place, it stays there and it, and it locks in really well. Again, taking a look at the inside, you can see you've got your channeled cutouts for the ventilation and it's got deep channels that work its way from the front to the back on this. And then you are gonna have little covers for the speaker. So if you're not using them, uh, you can leave those in there. They do have a little left-hand side so you can see which one is which. And then if you are running the comm system, you've got some deep channel cutouts in there that the speakers fit into. So a lot of the speakers that we're seeing now from some of these manufacturers are deeper, wider, thicker speakers for a better audio experience. However, a lot of manufacturers of the helmets haven't caught up yet to make their pockets deep enough that you don't feel those speakers pushing into your ears. So I like the fact that the channels on this are deeply cut into the shell, um, just so you don't have to worry about those speakers pushing out. And then there's channels where you can run the wiring throughout as well. So you don't have to worry about that feeling big or bulky underneath the helmet liner. And you can see there's even a little cutout in the front for the microphone of the, uh, of the actual comm system as well. So a couple, of, a couple of key changes here. And again, it's not something that's gonna be enjoyed by everybody. If you are a real fan of the previous 70 ST, like our associate Pat McHugh, um, he, uh, he spent some time in this new one and, and wasn't sold. You know, he actually said to me, you know, I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the old one. I was actually really looking forward to the update and seeing the direction that HJC took with this. It's not necessarily the helmet that I'll be adding to my collection next. So I think that's something of note for previous owners of the 70 ST that you really wanna make sure you're considering this helmet uh, closely with all the different details that we're seeing here and all the different changes made versus just going out and saying, well, this is the latest, the greatest, this is the newest version. I'm gonna, I'm gonna love it because it's the, built on the same foundation of the previous one. If, if anything, it's kind of a foundational redesign from the ground up, starting with the shell, the internal shape, all the technology it's getting, different face shield, different drop down sun visor. Uh, it is really a, a departure from what we've seen from the 70 ST in the past. Now there's a lot of riders out there using the 70 ST. There's a lot of riders out there gonna be using the ARFA 71. If you wanna hear more about what they have to say, you can click the info button on your desktop or mobile device. You can read other rider reviews from folks that are already putting this helmet through its paces. And if you're still not sure as to which helmet is right for you and your riding style, you can always reach out to one of our customer service reps where they can walk you through all the different helmets available to make sure you find the right one to match up with your price point as well as your riding style. Do keep in mind that we do have the price match guarantee and this helmet will ship for free. So I wanna thank you for joining us today for this look at the HJC ARFA 71. I'm Spurge, enjoy the ride.